everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Super Amazing Wagon Adventure. This is an indie game from 2012 that I totally missed, but people keep telling me you should definitely check out Super Amazing Wagon Adventure. So finally, now that there's been, as I always say, a dearth of new releases early in 2013 here, I figured let's go back and check this out. So I picked this up on Desura for, I think it was 250 or 3 bucks, but it's also available, and I think it started on Xbox Live Indie Games. It's not available on Steam yet, but I believe there is a green light campaign. I'll do some research after the video comes out, and if indeed there is, I will obviously link to that in the video description. But anyway, what is... Is super amazing wagon adventure uh, beyond a dope ass title screen with some screen bending and some surprisingly bumping theme music well it is uh, a parody in many ways of Oregon Trail if you're not familiar Oregon Trail was a like late 80s mid 80s early 90s I'm not totally sure uh, like strategy slash survival game commonly played in like middle school classrooms or basically you had a family that was moving westwards during the uh, settlement of the United States and you had to get to Oregon and you know people would die of dysentery on the way you had to hunt buffalo and trade with people etc etc this has been reimagined similar theme but reimagined as almost like a side-scrolling shooter and occasionally a twin stick shooter uh, very much tongue-in-cheek with a lot of humorous elements. This game is fucking hilarious. Anyway, we're gonna start our adventure. So it says, as you can see, but you know, in the mid-1830s, nearly half a million Americans migrated west over wagon trails. This is the story of one party. So we have our party of three here. We could just randomize these guys if I wanted to. They don't have any kind of, uh, like, unique traits beyond the fact that they have different faces. Like, it's not like somebody has a better stat in, you know, fur trading or something like that. What we are gonna do, just because this is, uh, my video, is we're gonna name these guys after some friends of the channel. So obviously, the leader, the driver of the wagon, is gonna be Ryan. Named, of course, after Ryan Leaf, San Diego Chargers quarterback. Uh, Ryan was a fine gentleman, and sadly they don't have, like, young bald man. Guess they didn't really have much in the way of, like, you know, razors back then. So we're gonna take balding gray hair man. Second party member, of course, is gonna be Michael A.L. Fox, but we'll just put in, um, Michael here. Always been a difficult name for me to spell because apparently I'm an idiot. I'm always like, is it A-E or E-A? Anyway. Uh, Michael was a fair lady with hair of copper. And then we also have, of course, J. Smith OTI, who we're just going to name Josh here because that is, you know, his legal birth name. And Josh is a fine gentleman. He kind of looks like this guy, actually. Short black hair. Anyway, we've got Ryan, Michael, and Josh. I have a feeling Michael is basically going to be used as a slam piece here, if you know what I'm saying. But anyway, we're going to get started. So we are in a, our trusty wagon here, uh, and we have a couple of choices. We're going to start with the standard, which is basically the first wagon that we come across, or the first wagon that we start with. Uh, you know, just like a standard ox, as well as a covered wagon. But I also have a couple that I've unlocked here that I haven't checked out yet, but I'll probably check those out in the video. So I've got the wild, which is primitive, and uh, the invisible, which is hard to see. So I have no idea what the benefits of those are. But anyway, day one, we set off into the forest. You could almost think of this game, and this is a, a bit of an oversimplification, but you could almost think of this almost as like a very primitive version of something like FTL, where we come across these conditions, basically, that we have to deal with. So this condition is, uh, you know, we come across these animals, and we have to not run into them. Oh, the skunk is gonna hurt, uh, because running into them would actually hurt us. What we have to do is kill these animals, and then take their carcasses, because we're gonna use those to trade to people later. Uh, so we're gonna come across all sorts of conditions like this. Also, we're gonna come across weapons, as you can see. I actually took some damage there. Ryan has been hit. There's the interface with some health bars up there. I've got a flamethrower now. Kill the bandits, please. The one thing I will say that does not- that makes this quite dissimilar from FTL is the fact that it's not procedurally or randomly generated. Like, generally, there's going to be a lot of overlap in the, uh, conditions that you come across. Flamethrower is actually very hard to hit these guys with. It's a very useful weapon during the game's many top-down segments, though. Anyway, so we're gonna fight a boss here. So as you can see, this is very much a departure from the original Oregon Trail, which was like a strategy game. Okay, so Ryan has left to forage for berries. I'm gonna do that. On his way back to the wagon, Ryan heard a noise in the trees. A bear wanted the berries. Can't have my berries, bear, even though they are your namesake. And actually, like I said, uh, the flamethrower is really good for these top-down segments. So now the bear's cry has alerted a horde of angry squirrels. We are going to kill these squirrels. I don't think we can pick up their carcasses, sadly, but anyway, we get back to the wagon. Occasionally, you're going to come across situations like that where one person has to depart from the wagon uh, in order to do some stuff, basically. So Michael had the brilliant idea to try to jump over the river, or we could ford it, which is basically just like putting our wagon through it. Jumping is risky, but it occasionally works out for us. Fording is hilarious. So they made the probably wise decision to ford the river. Let's continue onwards here. And that's basically the only element of choice uh, I've seen so far in the game. You have the choice to, like, ford or jump the river. You have sometimes choices in what path you're going to take. Uh, but most of the time, you're kind of... It's more of an action game than a, a strategy game, shall we say. Oh, gated through there. Something, something, boulders. Game very, like, self-aware sense of humor. 
in that they're basically like, we're throwing all these arbitrary conditions at you. It doesn't really matter what we say. Uh, we're just gonna make it happen. I gotta say that aesthetically, I really like this game. Like, surprisingly, c considering it started on Xbox Live Indie Games, I, this might sound a little bit uh, presumptuous, but I kind of assumed that it was not gonna be good and it was gonna be, you know, actually maybe just a ripoff of Oregon Trail, you know, with avatars or zombies or breasts in it, as a lot of Xbox Live Indie Games happen to be. Oh, Michael! We're not in a great position here. We do have an assault rifle, but everyone's getting a little bit hurt. That's okay. We are collecting a ton of carcasses. Uh, that we will be able to use. Should get that flamethrower. There's health. I got the health as well. Uh, the flamethrower is going to be very useful. And we're actually cooking the buffalo as we get them, which is useful. I actually don't know if that benefits us at all. Uh, but we are picking up a ton of corpses here. We don't actually eat the corpses, I believe. Uh, but what we do do is trade them to fur traders. But yeah, as I was saying, like aesthetically, I, I really think this game is surprisingly well done. I really like the uh, the idea of like the screen bending at the sides. That's something that also I guess like Retro City Rampage does as well. Oh god, some angry buffalo. This gets a little difficult. We gotta make sure we shoot these guys. This is when it would be really nice to have like a shotgun or some other kind of weapon like the flamethrower actually that will protect us here and actually allow us to gain some corpses. Uh, and the music is really well done as well. Like that's what really surprised me when I booted it up. I was like, this music is actually surprisingly great. All right, so we have a fur trader now who will give us something in exchange for our animal hides. We could get some health, we could get a bow, 20 arrows, or we can get a rocket launcher. Uh, I think we should just buy some health to be honest with you. Just boot everybody up just a little bit. I don't care about those guys. I'm full on health now. They noticed an injured falcon to the side of the trail. An animal lover, Michael, decided to help. Well, it figures that Fox is going to try to save this falcon. Coyotes wanted to eat the injured falcon. Not on my watch. I must have missed that part in uh, history class. Where... Oh, we, we can get these corpses. Uh, where the, you know, original settlers... How did he get hit there? The original settlers used um, flamethrowers to kill coyotes, but hey, I must have missed a lot of that because I went to school in Canada instead of America. So now we have a falcon uh, instead of our pistol, which is basically going to be a hunting partner for us, and it's really useful. So Michael is just making his way across the plains here, literally throwing his falcon at Buffalo. And it's almost working like a, a boomerang in The Legend of Zelda or something, where it will ret retrieve the corpses and bring them back. So this is basically uh, just a straight upgrade for our pistol here, and this is among the furthest I've ever made it in the game. A wagon axle broke, broke the wagon was stuck. All right, what happens next? Michael left the wagon to walk to the nearest trading post miles away. I like how we make the woman do this. No offense, Mike, if you're watching this, but I did make you a lady. There's no way that we are going to make it all the way to Oregon without having some way of, like, creating more generations of humans. This falcon is dope as hell. I don't even want the... Okay, the arrow is also pretty sweet, but I think the falcon is better. Uh, they're swarming me! Oh, Michael was eaten by a coyote. All right. Uh, hopefully we still have the falcon, though. Okay, so Josh left for the trading post now. You can do it, buddy. If not, Coyote sounded him. Okay. If not, uh, I don't want the shotgun. That's the thing. Oh, the Coyotes! God, they're a pain in the ass. It's actually okay. The assault rifle might be a good option for us. I like how the Falcon just flies away. He's like, "All right, you don't want my services? Fuck you, then." All right. Josh stumbled upon a camp of sleeping travelers. Steal their stuff. Steal the health, Josh. Josh noticed the travelers had left supplies sitting in the camp. He was tempted to steal the supplies. Oh. Steal. It's just like The Walking Dead. Take the health. You need the health. Take the flamethrower. Okay, he felt bad for stealing the supplies, but he knew that he'd need all he could get. Excellent! Finally, Josh reached the trading post. It only took him eight days. The replacement axle cost all of Josh's money, then he had to travel back. That's fine. We've got this sweet-ass flamethrower, you know, in addition to this backup falcon, which is probably the best secondary weapon that any game in history has ever had. I should definitely be picking up these coyote corpses. Because they are going to basically be our currency when we get to trade with fur traders. Alright, the Great Plains are huge. So we're going to continue going here, I guess. Like I said, game very self-aware and has a good sense of humor. It's basically like, okay, we can't just like change the aesthetic every single level. Like on the buffalo one, it's like, there's literally... Or well, when it starts, it's like, there's some buffalo. Then the next screen, it's like, there's an absurd amount of buffalo. Buffalo, 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 buffalo. All right, we've reached another river. This one is too deep to ford. Day 69! Of course, this is when this would happen. Uh, Ryan had the brilliant idea to swim underwater through the river. Alternatively, they could go around it through a desert path. Uh, I think we should swim, because Ryan had this idea, and I'm the leader of this wagon. If you don't like it, you can just get out. So we're, uh, you know, flying our wagon underwater, killing deadly piranhas with a falcon that we nurse back to health. And apparently, I didn't know this, but uh, you can eat piranhas, I guess. So we also have some kind of like triple shooting gun here. I don't really understand it. I think the Falcon might actually be a, a great deal better. But in any case, this is uh, nice for me because I'm having like probably my all-time greatest run 
on camera, which is something that almost never happens. All right, angry narwhals, stay away from me. When does the narwhal bacon? <laughs> You guys know what I'm talking about. This guy definitely knows what I'm talking I think the falcon actually kills them. Oh, did you just... This falcon just mauled a narwhal to death and brought its corpse back to me. That is awesome. I don't even want the sniper rifle, but I guess I'll take it. Oh, poisonous jellyfish. All right, I don't like that. The sniper rifle is garbage. Just get the bullets out of there so you don't have to use them anymore. Jellyfish, kill the jellyfish. Oh, this is not good. I can't shoot behind me. Someone's gonna die here. This is not, this is very bad. It's gonna be Josh. I'm sorry, buddy. All right, Jellyfish wrapped its tentacles around Josh, stinging him and stinging him, eventually killing him. Oh, Ryan landed on a small island to catch his breath. I lived. It's an oasis. We can retire. He noticed supplies sitting on the beach. He left the wagon to investigate. Pick him up, man. Yes. I don't want the shotgun, though. He realized why the supplies were here. They were guarded by a flock of angry pelicans. Pelican versus. Oh, Jesus Christ. I've never seen this screen before. Ryan ran back to the wagon, quickly left the island, and swam to the shore of the river. Just no more jellyfish and we'll be okay. Alright, I've entered a mountain pass all alone now. But that's okay. Came down with yellow fever. Let's not even talk about that joke right there. I'm still alive, but whenever you get a disease in this game, it usually takes you a little bit lower uh, on your health. Like, it takes you down to one. Are we seriously, like, killing alpacas here and eating them? Uh, or is that just a dog? It's kind of hard to tell. How could I be hungry? I've got 193 corpses in this wagon. This thing shouldn't even be moving anymore. F equals MA. Okay, a pack of wolves smelled the blood. I have a feeling this is where things are going to get a little rough for me. Wolves are notoriously quick moving. And they hate balded men. Balded? I'm not sure if that's a real word. Okay, the arrow's pretty sweet, I'll admit. Get the health, get the health! Okay, that dog. Oh, okay, you unlocked Howling Good Time Survival Mode. We'll talk about Survival Mode after we leave this. For sure. Okay, I've recovered from Yellow Fever. That should give me uh, one extra health. No, it's taking me back to full? I think I can actually make it to Oregon, believe it or not. Day 102. Ryan came across a fur trader. Tell me something. Okay, supplies in exchange for animal hides. I can't buy any health because I don't need to, but I could buy more arrows. I don't want any of this stuff. I already have the Falcon. So we have an active volcano. We must be going through like Washington or something right now. I rush to avoid the approaching lava. This seems a little silly. Is this Aladdin on the Super Nintendo? Aladdin? Aladdin? Okay. Careful. It's Castle Crashers now. We have the Falcon. Just keep moving the Falcon ahead of you. Clear a path. And continue generating corpses for me. Oh, now I got the triple shot. Okay. Wolves burning alive. Ran out from the... Oh, come on! Immolated wolves? It's okay. Oh, that's not okay. At least our wagon didn't- Oh! Okay. Volcanic bombs rain down from above. Some Contra 3 shit going on here. It's okay. It's just like the rock part. Just sneak through there. Thread the needle. Oh, come on! What's a boy to do? Ah, a volcanic bomb turned Ryan to ash. Well, that is by far the longest run I've ever had in Super Amazing Wagon Adventure. And as you can probably tell by the tone of my commentary during that, I found that to be a lot of fun. This is a game that I've had a lot of good fun with so far. I've probably spent like an hour, hour and a half, which for three bucks is a, a pretty substantial value. Uh, we are going to check out the survival mode as well. I just want to say on the adventure mode, I love it. The one knock against it is that all the conditions are, are very similar. Like sometimes you'll get a disease, sometimes you won't. But apart from that, all the instances are pre-planned. So it's like every time you have like that river you can ford or jump over. The results are different if you jump over it. Sometimes you'll just succeed, sometimes you'll land in a bee's nest. Uh, etc, etc. Uh, but beyond that, it's all pretty much the same every single time. It's a game where it's not so much about, like, it being procedurally generated or randomly generated and you have to kind of, like, roll the dice on the conditions. It's more a game of just, like, your skill at shooting and dodging. Uh, which is cool. I mean, I think it works well for this game, but I would have loved a little bit more random generation, although it's probably outside of the scope of this game. Anyway, we're gonna go check out the survival mode, which I haven't seen so far, uh, but I'm pretty sure that I know what it is. It's just, like, survive as long as you can. Like, let's let's get the fish here. Uh, let's go. Yeah, you probably just have to survive as long as you can with these uh, piranhas coming at you would be my guess. Which is probably... Oh, I, that's so bullshit I can't even hit them because they're at the bottom of the screen. And then you get into this part where it's like impossible because once the fish get behind you, it's basically just game over. Because I, I don't... Yeah, you definitely cannot shoot behind you unless I'm missing something. Or maybe they just like take up one side of the screen. So you just like lose that part of the screen. Alright, well that also complicates things. But in any case, we had a little bit of weird slowdown there, but that's okay. 
keep it up. You know what? I'm not that into the survival mode. I kind of get it, but we're going to quit back to the main menu here. And we're just going to check out. We're not going to play through a full adventure here. But I just want to check out what one of these uh, other wagons do. Does, I suppose, if I'm using that tense. We'll stick with our trusted team that got me further than I've ever gone before. And why don't we try out the, uh, the primitive, which is the one I got here. I mean, you can see there's some crazy stuff here. There's a T-Rex. There's an alien. The glitch. It looks like the wheels are all effed up there. That might be a fighter jet. Hard to tell. That's pretty sweet. It's like some Cinderella carriage or something. Uh, anyway. They also have uh, conditions, obviously. That's just a car, I'm pretty sure. Uh, the conditions that you can see. So, unlock by mastering the sword. Unlock by getting breakfast. Unlock by mystery. So, I have no idea what any of these things are. And I have no idea. Also, oh, that's sweet. So, I guess that they do start with different weapons. So, the, uh, the primitive starts with the falcon. So, you don't actually have to get it. Which is cool. So, I mean, I'm not going to actually play through the whole thing here. Let's just go back to the main menu. I kind of want to see what the... Uh, what was the other one? The invisible. I want to see what that has. Is it just like an invisible carriage, but we still have our pistol? I mean, either way, I guess that's sort of cool that it's got a little bit of variety there. Uh, but let's go check that out right here. And see what we got. Maybe we shoot out a ghost? No, we're still... I don't even know what we're shooting, to be honest with you. Josh got mumps, which is pretty bad. Uh, also, we're all basically dead. I don't know why we all start with one health. But we all have some pretty awesome uh, core strength, considering we're not even sitting on anything here. I have no idea what weapon we're using, by the way, if this is a better weapon or what. But in any case, I'm going to quit back to the main menu here. This has been Super Awesome Wagon Adventure, uh, available on Desura, as well as Xbox Live Indie Games. Highly recommend it if you're uh, into side-scrolling shooters like this, or just want to laugh, basically. It kind of reminds me of DLC Quest in the sense that, uh, on a gameplay level, it's very simplistic and nothing to write home about necessarily. Uh, but the fact that it has this kind of humor in it elevates it beyond that and absolutely makes it worth the $3 asking price. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I've enjoyed making this video, and I will see you next time.